Welcome to this special live edition of the eClinical Works podcast. I'm Adam Salati. Thank you all so much for being here in person and hopefully here watching later on. Well, no shows, cancellations, and reschedules disrupt daily schedules, reduce patient access, impede quality measure and value based care performance, and negatively impact revenues, of course. Unsuccessful visits in all their forms have long been considered an unavoidable part of healthcare. But recent advances in AI are prompting many to rethink that assumption. Using Hilo No-Show Prediction AI, practices are able to understand which visits are most likely to be missed weeks before they happen, allowing them to rescue those appointments from going unused. And here to discuss how this capability is improving processes and operations at Total Healthcare is Howard Spritz, Revenue Cycle Manager and System Administrator for Total Healthcare, a 64 provider FQHC in Baltimore, Maryland. Howard, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. My pleasure, thank you. So Howard, what was Total Healthcare's experience with no-shows until very recently? So like with most entities, no-shows have been a struggle for Total Healthcare. We tried a lot of different methods to, okay. to capture um, as high a show rate as possible. Uh, primarily speaking, uh, we did utilize ECW Messenger, uh, and any unconfirmed appointments, we were calling patients a day or two in advance. Uh, we were also doing pre-visit planning across multiple uh, departments within Total Healthcare, but our no-show rate still was fairly high. Uh, quite a challenge, uh, like with most companies. <laughs> So what information do you get now that you have the Hilo no-show prediction AI model? And how is that being put to use? Oh, it's been very helpful. Uh, the, the predictor model shows us uh, the probability of patients that are likely to be a no-show. So working closely with the data analytics team at ECW, uh, we focused it on those patients that were at an 80% probability and higher. So immediately we started uh, targeting those with a, with a micro-focus. Instead of just calling every patient and not knowing what we were dealing with, we knew in advance that those patients were most likely to be no-shows. So we started outreach to those patients, and that was successful fairly quickly in the process. But it really gave us a micro-focus to, to be engaged about with our patient population. So instead of you know, this kind of uh, this, this unknown, who's going to show, who's not going to show, you can very, very specifically target the, the patients who are at most at risk of missing that appointment and take action. Now, I know up until now you've been making a lot of calls. What is happening on those calls? How are your, how are your staff interacting with these patients when they do this outreach? We have a few key staff members making those calls. And again, they know that these patients are most likely to not arrive for their appointments. So they're engaged and energized at the beginning. Uh, we've given them a basic script to work with so again, they know these patients are the most difficult amongst our population. So we really encourage our staff that's making the calls to go out of their way and engage in a real back and forth dialogue with each patient that they're calling. Uh, we ask them if they have any transportation issues, if there are any childcare issues, if there's a better time during the day for them to show up, if there's a different location perhaps for them to show up, a different provider, uh, and make sure they have all of the information they know well in advance that, uh, in order to make their appointment and make it on time. So it's really a targeted effort and we go out of our way to reach out to those patients and engage in a dialogue with them. Now it sounds like a lot of things that you mentioned there that you might talk about with these patients, but I think it, it serves, uh, you know, it, it deserves to be emphasized that you're only really focusing on 10% of your, your patient population, just the ones that are at highest risk here. So your staff, I think, can afford to spend that extra time. I think you also use a lot less staff overall than you might have to, because you said you were calling every single patient on the schedule before, right? Now you're only calling a very small amount. Yeah. How many people do you have working on this currently? Uh, right now we just have two people and they work together. They rotate days and hours. So it really does not impact their overall functionality. Uh, and they find the time to make the calls. So two part-time people for a 50, 60 provider group, that's, uh, that's not very much at all. How successful has that outreach been for you? And how long did it take for you to notice an impact? It's been very successful so far. Uh, again, working with the ECW data analytics team, uh, we found our baseline before we started the project, uh, these patients at an 80% probability and higher were showing up only 11% of the time. Uh, after implementing the ECW predictor, that number skyrocketed to 36%. So in working with the data, data analytics team, uh, they were quite impressed with those numbers. 
as, uh, as we were. Uh, really noticed a significant improvement quite quickly. Yeah, and you haven't been on this model for very long. You only turned it on a few months ago, is that yes, correct? Yeah, exactly. So. Within the first 30 to 45 days, we really saw significant improvement. And in conjunction with that improvement, it's energized staff when they're making the calls and they see that they're having a benefit. It really helps everyone just uh, be more encouraged about the product and the outreach to the patients. So where do you see Total Healthcare taking the no-show predictions from here? What's the next step? Well, it's interesting. What's been happening as we re uh, review these reports on a weekly basis, um, we've noticed fewer patients are coming in at that 80% probability and higher on the reports. Uh, our patient population is learning, and the AI tool is also learning. So it's really exciting when we look at the reports and we see a patient that was 99% likely to be a no-show last month, and now they're at 50%. So they've shown up a few times, and the, and the model uh, accounts for that. So it's really exciting. It gives our staff, again, that added motivation. And they say, hey, Mr. Smith is now showing up on time uh, consistently every two months. And it really gives us that boost to want to keep working and keep uh, watching those numbers improve day, day after day. So moving forward now, we're targeting patients at the 60% threshold and higher because we are seeing fewer at that 80% higher threshold. So we're targeting patients at the 60% and above and we hope to continue to see marked improvement as the days turn into months. Excellent, excellent. And, uh, you know, uh, calling is just one, one method you could use to interact with this, this list of predictions. Uh, I think you've also discussed in the future using, some, if, now that you have more confidence with it, maybe doing some double bookings as well and stuff like that. So it would be interesting to see where it goes yeah, from there. You know, absolutely. And we have already started some selective uh, double booking and, um, and rescheduling appointments as well and uh, opening up telephone encounters as needed when there's a little more outreach needed for a patient that has been a consistent no-show. So we're employing a lot of tactics and the bottom line numbers are showing those results. Well, hopefully we can hear some updates at the next national conference from you and see where you are then. That'd be great to, that'd be great to understand. But for those of you here uh, who are at the national conference this weekend, we actually have a session with Howard and myself going into more detail on the no-show prediction model tomorrow afternoon. And of course, We'll have uh, people staffing the no-show prediction booth uh, this weekend at the National Conference. Howard, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. My pleasure, and I look forward to talking with anybody that wants to chat and uh, uh, the presentation tomorrow as well. Thank and don't forget to check out our other eClinical Works podcast episodes on YouTube, Apple, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and my.eclinicalworks.com. For the eClinical Works podcast, I'm Adam Salati. Thanks for watching.